Hi friends, if you want to invest in stocks for long term, this video is very very important for you because in this video I will cover three critical points. Point number one is I will speak about three sun rising sectors that can give very high returns in the next five to eight years. Point number two is I will also cover one stock and I will do full fundamental analysis of that stock but more importantly that stock caters to all the three sun rising sectors that I will cover. Point number three is I will briefly touch upon the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning into predicting the stock's behavior. So this video is going to be super interesting. Stay tuned. So first sector is semiconductor sectors. Back in 2021, government of India announced the investment of 76,000 crores in semiconductors. This is now becoming reality because on 29th of February, Union Cabinet approved establishment of three semiconductor plants in India. Out of three, two of these will be set up by Tata. So the first plant will be set up by Tata in Gujarat and that is already being built right now and the investment is going to be around 91,000 crores. The second plant will be built by Tata's and that investment is going to be around 27,000 crores. They are building it in Assam. When this announcement came on 29th of February, what happened immediately is that Tata Investment Corporation, one of the shares, jumped by close to 21% in four days. If you look at the chart of Tata Investment Corporation, you will see the rally here four days, 21% jump. Could this rally continue in the coming months and years? Look, nobody can predict the behavior of a stock in the future. But nowadays, there are applications that are using artificial intelligence, machine learning, to look at the past history of stock's behavior and they are trying to predict the behavior of the stock for the future. One such application is Shunya by Finvesia. They are SEBI registered DMAT account brokers. I recently created my account with Shunya by Finvesia and what you see on my screen is I have logged into my account. Here what you see is the stocks in green. That means that there is going to be a potential upside in these stocks. The stocks that are shown in the red, they are going to see potential downside in the coming weeks and months. Of course, we can't blindly follow this and invest in any of these stocks. But the point here is that we can do our own analysis and validate our analysis using some of these data. And in this video, what I'll do is the stock that I will pick up, I will first do my full analysis of that stock. And then we will jump back into this to have a look at and validate our results, whether our analysis is valid or not. And if you want to use this facility, you can open a DMAT account with Shunya. I will provide you the link in the description. Their account opening charges are zero. Their annual maintenance charges are zero. And if you invest through this platform, then the brokerage charges of intraday, delivery, FNO, currency is absolutely zero. Anyways, coming back to Tata Investment Corporation, is it a good stock or not? See, in my view, if you want to invest in semiconductors business only, then Tata Investment Corporation is not a relevant stock for that, mainly because Tata Investment Corporation invests in more than 85 companies and they invest in Tata companies, they invest in non-Tata companies. They also have Tata Asset Management Limited inside it, Tata Trustee Corporation Limited. So there is a lot going on within Tata Investment Corporation. So if you're only looking to invest in semiconductors business, then Tata investment corporation is much more than that therefore i wouldn't say that this is a right relevant stock for semiconductors business and this brings me to the stock of this video which is cg power and industrial solutions limited cg power is the company that is going to set up the third semiconductor plant in gujarat in partnership with a company from japan as well as in thailand and they are going to invest roughly 7600 crores into this plant. Now, very interesting point about CG Power is that this company is already catering to two sunrising sectors other than semiconductor that it is going to operate in. These two sectors are number one is railways. And as all of us know that railways is attracting a lot of attention and budget from Indian government, right? For example, in 24, 25, the budget for railways has been increased to 2.55 trillion rupees. So the next two to three years for railways still look very, very positive. And the third sector this company is already operating is power sector. And many of us already know that Indian government has been spending a lot of money in power sector. In fact, there are so many power sector schemes the money that is being invested in those schemes has gone up by close to 50% in budget 2024. So there is a lot of growth in these three sectors, which is semiconductor, railways and power and CG power and industrial solutions. The stock that now we will speak about caters to all the three sectors. So this could be a very well, a very, very good long term bet. Again, not a recommendation, but please hear out the full analysis of this stock and you are going to learn a lot with that. Let me now take you to the full analysis of this stock. So what you see on my screen is the chart history for last five years. And this stock used to trade at around five rupees, six rupees, seven rupees back in COVID times. It has now gone up to 500 rupees levels. In fact, in the last one or two days, so last one week, the stock has appreciated by close to 9%. Last one month, the stock has rallied like 15%. Now, let me give you critical points about this stock. 
So this company is part of the Murugappa group. You may have heard the companies such as Chola Mandalam Finance and many others. So Murugappa group is a very, very big and diverse group. So where does this company make money from, right? So very briefly, this company is into two business units right now. Industrial systems that bring 68% of the revenues. I've got these numbers from their latest annual reports, okay? Power system contributes to 32% of the revenues. Now within industrial systems, they have motors and drives contributing up to 50% of their revenues and railways is contributing up to 18% of the revenues. Let me quickly give you gist of these two business units. So motors, drives and consumer products is contributing 50%. They have nine manufacturing plants and you can see here low tension motors, industrial motors, stampings, etc. is what they manufacture. Drives and automations is what they manufacture and also they manufacture commercial products. All of this is contributing up to 50% of their revenues. Moving on to the railways, so they manufacture something called as traction machines. They also manufacture railway transportation and traction electronics and also they manufacture railway signaling machines contributing up to total 18% of the revenues and they have three manufacturing plants when it comes to railway products. Then comes the power systems. So in power systems, they are manufacturing distribution transformers, power transformers as well as switch gears contributing to close to 32% of their business. Now comes very, very important point. This company is operating in railways as well as in power sector. So they understand the nitty gritties of both the sectors and both the sectors need electronics devices and semiconductor chips into the machines, right? And this company is very new to the semiconductor business, but since they are doing partnership with a Thailand based company as well as a Japanese company, that know-how is going to be attracted from these two companies. And if we club this with the knowledge that they have for power and railway sector, this is going to become a beautiful amalgamation of knowledge as well as delivery. And this is where their business mode really lies. And that is why if you read here, what it says is they are going to manufacture chips for consumer, industrial automotive and power applications. So far, if you're liking this video, humble request you to hit the like button. Let me know in the comments a simple thank you. It will motivate me to do a lot of research for you at zero cost. Let's now dig deeper into this business and understand where the growth is coming from. So what you see on my screen is their latest presentation and you will see that power systems business that is bringing around 32% of revenues is growing from a top line perspective, from sales perspective by 24% year on year, which is a very, very decent growth. But more importantly, from an EBITDA perspective, it is growing by close to 63%. A very, very healthy growth rate is what we can see here. Also, I want you to have a look at the unexecuted order book, which is grown by 55%. So this is a phenomenal growth that we can see in power systems, which is contributing up to 32% of the revenue. Let's now move to industrial systems, which is their second business unit, which is built up of motors plus railways. And if you see the growth there, top line growth is only 12%. So this is not a very high growth rate. EBITDA is only growing by 3% here and unexecuted order book is only 9%. So the key takeaway here is that it is not growing at a speed at which the power business unit is growing, right? Let's also dig deeper and have a look at the railways division. So railways division, if you look at the sales growth in the last nine months, you will see that it is grown by 14%. So if I were to break this down further between motors and railways, railways is growing at 14% growth rate here, but motors business primarily is down right now. And I've seen that in their management commentary as well. Let me bring that down here for you. Page number four, what their management is saying here is that the demand for their motors business is right now weak. And therefore the distributors and the dealers are not stocking the motors right now because the demand atmosphere right now is looking very weak. But please also remember that when you're looking to invest for long term, the demand generally is in cycles, right? Not for every business, but for many of the businesses, demand sometimes go up, come down. So few quarters here and there may not make much difference, but this is something as a caution I would give on this stock because right now their motors business is not growing at a speed at which their railways or their power system business units are growing. Let me now show you the holistic picture of the company level. So if you look at the company level, their sales are growing at 15% right now, nine months duration I have taken here and EBITDA margin is going by around 20%, right? Unexecuted order book in totality, if you look at it, is growing by around 34%. The reported PAT profit after tax is growing by at around 40% rate. So all in all, the growth rate the company is showing right now is very, very healthy. Now, when you go to screener, you will notice very interesting factor here, which is that their sales have been coming down, right? Please do not worry about it because there was a demerger done and this company demerged Crompton Greaves 
as a separate electronics manufacturing company which is into kitchen appliances fence etc as a result of that you will see the revenues coming down at some point in time here but that is mainly because of the demerger right now let me quickly speak about the future growth prospects of this company if you look at my screen you will see that the company is putting 662 crores of capex which is building new plants right and majority of that investment is going into low tension motors in Ahmednagar in Goa basically the motors business is going to pick up once they do this investment because we saw that motors business has shown lower growth rate versus the railways as well as power right but they're also investing in power businesses as you can see here all in all they are putting a lot of money into capex that is always a very very good sign for a company's growth in the upcoming months and years right also if i look at the balance sheet of this company you will very quickly notice here that they are a cash rich company they are sitting at 1379 crores of cash here the company is totally debt free that is not there at all so overall that's a very very good story to look at if you look at the shareholding pattern of this company you will notice that the promoter's stake has been going up and it has gone from 43 percent back in 2021 to around 58% in December 2023. And if I show you who are the promoters here, you will notice that Tube Investments of India Limited holds 58% of the stake in this company. So there is a tight coupling between Tube Investment India Limited as well as CG Power from a stocks relationship perspective. And if you look at the FIIs, the stake has gone up from 8.8% to around 16%, almost doubled in two, three years of time. From a DIS perspective, 7.31% back in 2021, gone up to 9.15%. So overall, the picture looks really, really green from a shareholding perspective as well. Let's quickly also have a look at the valuation of this company. What you see is the PE ratio and PB ratio of this company. Industry PE and PB is at around 39 and 6.72 respectively, but this company, CG Power, is trading at 88 p extremely high and 34 pb again very very high but if you compare this with similar companies that are operating in so for example power equipment manufacturing likes of siemens or abb they are trading at 85 p 96 p nothing in this market is coming at cheap rate especially the good stocks right but if you look at the pv value here it is trading at around 12 or 20 siemens and abb respectively this company is at 34 and this is where the risk lies the valuation risk here is very very high because stock has been rallying right as we saw in the previous sections of this video it might come down because this is trading at a very very high valuation but this being a growth stock investors are putting their money into this stock please do not take this as a recommendation do your own research Put this stock in your watch list. Maybe you can consider buying these stocks when the valuations are not this high because you don't want to lose your money as well, right? But let me now take you to Shunne and try to see what is Shunne trying to project here in terms of this stock. So if you look at one year chart, Shunya is showing that CG Power is going to have potential upside. This is just a prediction. It is not a guaranteed stock recommendation here, right? So here it is showing predictability score is 0.79. If this predictability score is close to one, that means there is a lot of confidence behind the data that this platform has churned out, right? But if I bring it to, for example, three months of duration, the predictability score here, let us see what it does. It comes down to 0.69, right? If we bring it down to one month, you will see the predictability score is coming down to 0.58. So my point is simple that this stock as per Shunya by Finvesia looks like for a longer term, if you increase the horizon, time horizon, the predictability or the confidence in this stock grows. But in the short term, the predictability comes down. You can use this tool to validate your analysis. Do not take this as a recommendation blindly and go and invest in any of these stocks. Do your analysis and try and validate it. And if you want to use this facility, what you need to do is open a DMAT account with Shunya. Their account opening charges are zero. Their annual maintenance charges are zero. Essentially, they are zero fee broker that uses multiple exchanges such as NSE, BSE, etc. They are also registered with SEBI, so you can trust them with giving your details. I'll provide you the link in the description to help you out. I hope you enjoyed this video and got to learn a lot of things. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments a simple thank you. I will see you in my next video. Until then, keep rocking.